Uh, if you're hung up on everything being, you know, magazine perfect, then, uh, you're, you know, you're going to do a lot more work. But if you're just thinking like a plant, what does the plant need? Well, then, then you can really make it simple and low cost, and you can just use rotten logs, old cardboard boxes, yard waste, and have a great garden. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com, out here with the black flies, making my garden a little bit bigger. I know I said I wouldn't do it, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> and I'm using potatoes to cultivate the ground, uh, which is something I've done before. But I got a lot of new viewers, and I thought I'd do a video. Not everyone goes back and watches all 500 of the old videos, so I thought I'd do a video just explaining that technique and also showing the way I've built this new garden just for those that you know want to want to claim some new space want to make their new garden this year and uh, want to learn a really easy way to take uh, especially this sort of situation where it's against a fence or against the side of a house or against a wall of some kind right where you, you're only really accessing the garden from one side uh, so I'm going to explain how I've put it together uh, it's very very easy goes together very easy not a lot of work um, and very very cheap not the prettiest thing in the world, but uh, the plants don't care. So come have a look. All right, so I got a garden that's about two feet to two and a half feet from front to back. That's because that's about as far as I can reach in from a side. I can't, I can't access the garden from the fence side. I can only access it from this side. So that's roughly my reach, two feet, two and a half feet, three feet at the most. And it gets very uncomfortable after that. But as you can see, I just use pegs, right? You just put a board up, drive a couple pegs, maybe three pegs per board. And then you put another, the, here I got, these are just old boards from, you know, I've got some raised bed gardens, slightly raised bed gardens in the um, fenced garden. This is outside the fenced enclosure. Uh, once that wood is too rotten to hold together as a rectangular raised bed, it's still gonna use, <laughs> right? So these are all sort of rotted out, but they're still fine for doing something like this, just sort of quick, rough and ready garden, and this is all you need. I mean, this is this is basically how I uh, used to garden before I had a YouTube channel or anything, right? I still do, I guess, right? So very, very simple, very low tech. You're just holding everything together with pegs. Uh, I got pegs holding that against the fence. And then over here, I've got a peg just keeping the log from rolling this way. Don't need a peg on the inside because I'm gonna have stuff in there that'll sort of push out on it, right? And you can see I've got just old grass and weeds here, and old grass and weeds here, and a whole bunch of cardboard and stuff here. So last year, I grew kind of a lousy potato garden. I'm gonna improve on that this year, uh, but I grew a, a kind of potato garden here. Uh, put potatoes down, threw a whole bunch of mulch on top, and uh, just let it all grow and sort of thing. So most of the, so it was like that underneath, right? But all that stuff mostly died. So when uh, everything thawed out in the spring, I just put all this cardboard and stuff on top to keep it like that, right? I don't want anything growing there. This is going to be a pumpkin garden this year. I have found that potatoes, for the most part, are deer proof, porcupine proof, rabbit proof. I've got all those things here. Literally, if you look over here, if any of you are hunters, you know anything about the woods, that's a deer trail. <laughs> that's not people trail. I might walk down this three, four, five times a year. That's from deer. You can see how it's been sort of padded down and worked on, right? That's a deer trail, right? Um, and also they walk along, right along the fence line here. <laughs> they go right around my garden. And sometimes I'm out in the garden, I'll, I'll look up and I'll see a deer uh, looking at me. Because I've got a big forest over here. Well, goes on. If you want to get to civilization and you walk this way, you're probably going to have to walk for two days, maybe three, and you're going to need a compass, or you're not going to get there. <laughs> anyway, so I've got some weedy ground here, and i got some weedy ground here, and that's where I'm going to plant potatoes. I'll make another video, oh, probably in a month or so when I plant, uh, it's too early to plant pumpkins, uh, it just gets too cold at night. It was two degrees Celsius last night, it's still, you know, frost temperatures. So this is just going to chill for now, and I'm going to use a different technique for getting the pumpkins going it's here, but that's a whole nother video. Today I'm just talking about taking weedy ground and planting potatoes to turn the weedy ground into nice soil. 
So I got some half decent uh, seed potato here that's been, uh, these are just my own saved seed potatoes. And they've been sitting in a window chitting, C-H-I-T-T-I-N-G, chitting, uh, for uh, oh, about a month or so. I took them out, more than a month really. I took them out maybe middle of March. Um, some of these are Purple Chieftain, some of these are Red New Orleans, some of these are Russet Burbank. Whole bunch of different ones. Just These were just all the potatoes that were uh, a bit on the small small, small size uh, last fall when I was harvest, my, harvesting my potatoes, golf ball sized potatoes. I have so many potatoes that uh, I always set aside a few, even though I order them as well, but I always set aside a few for um, planting. So, um, so all I'm going to do here is show you how I prepare this. Now, you can, you know, just set the potatoes right on the grass. Remember, I'm going to put a heavy mulch over this. And uh, I mean like about 12 inches of mulch over this, right? So none of these weeds are, all these weeds are almost all of them are gonna be smothered out by that mulch. Now some people put newspaper down and put the potatoes on top of the newspaper. I like having the potatoes right on the grass. Uh, my, my thinking is that, you know, the, the grass is in the soil. If you kill the grass by smothering it out, then you want the potatoes are gonna root into the soil that the grass is growing in, which is what you want to facilitate, right? So that's that's my my reasoning on that. Um, plant them all about, you know, hands pan apart in a, in a sort of grid, right? So you can just plant them right on top of the grass, like that, okay? If you're feeling energetic, or you've got a teenager or someone in your household that's got a bit of, you know, energy. Uh, just take a little pickaxe. This is sort of like a half size pickaxe. I got it at a, people always ask me where I got this thing. I got it at an Army Navy surplus store. I guess it's for digging foxholes or something. Uh, so it's sort of like a half weight pickaxe. Came with a very short handle. I got a video on how I put this handle on it, right? But if you've got a little bit of energy, it doesn't take much work at all. You can work that, just chop it up a little bit. Right? Some of this is, you know, pretty uh, decent sod. But early in the season like this, it's a lot easier to, to work stuff. Again, we're not working very hard here. I mean, this is just going to take a couple minutes. And you don't have to do this. But it will... Uh, some bark here, I don't need... It will... My experience, it does help the potatoes a little bit, but it's not necessary. Got a bad back or whatever? Don't bother, just let the potatoes do all the work. All right? It just makes it that much harder for the various uh, kinds of weed plants that are in there to grow. All right, that's all we need there. Now it's just a question of positioning our potatoes. Nothing too fancy. Spacing, about a hand span apart for each potato. This technique, you don't water them, you don't hill them, you don't do anything. I lay them down like this, I apply mulch, and then I just do nothing for the remainder of the gardening season. Just let let the potatoes work, work it on out. And it works. You probably are not gonna get like, um, you know, best in show, you know, the most amazing potatoes ever, but you're gonna get potatoes with very little work, right? All right. A couple more. Couple more here. There's a rock. See how easy this is? When I dig up these potatoes, this soil is going to be beautiful. I'll put a video link at the end of, a, of another space in my garden where I used this technique a number of years ago. It works. 
it's just a great way of working the soil. So, I mean, you saw what I did with the pickaxe. Pretty quick, not a lot of work there. And there's still lots of weeds and lots of grass and lots of different things here. But when I dig these potatoes up, oh, you know, in uh, August, I would guess August, um, all of this soil is gonna look, it's gonna look beautiful, <laughs> all right? Uh, some of you are shaking your head saying, impossible, you have to hill them, you have to do this, you have to do that. But uh, I've done this enough times. Now these ones are all kind of small, so I'm gonna throw a whole bunch of these are all like, you know, m almost marble sized. So the marble sized ones don't tend to get great results. So you might as well use the shotgun approach with them and just throw, throw a whole bunch of them in there and see what happens. There you go. There we go. All right, that's the first part. I got a neighbor that loves to rake his lawn. And I love that neighbor. <laughs> so I don't know what all this stuff is. I don't much care. Uh, I'm not, that's a big, uh, that's a big weed clump. Oh, I don't want that. Yeah, let's throw away. I often get the, uh, the comment, aren't you worried about the yard waste having pesticides, herbicides, blah, 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 Roundup, whatever in it. Uh, generally speaking, I'm not, because where I live, you're not allowed to use that stuff. <laughs> it's not to say people don't use it, uh, but it's very unlikely. And uh, maybe I'm a bit of a risk taker, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'm too much of a, I'm not a, you know, if anyone that knew me back in university, my younger days, no one would ever characterize me as a wild man. Uh, so uh, I don't think I'm taking a huge risk here. Most of this is just leaves and sticks. Basically this is just, someone mowed their lawn the first time and they had all these weeds and stuff in it and they just raked it all up. All excellent mulch. Potatoes will have no problem finding their way through that. I know that sounds improbable, but they will find their way through it. And the key for this method to be successful is to put at least, what's that, seven inches, six inches for leaves anyway. Now, certain mulches break down faster than others. Generally speaking, for leaves, I'd say, yeah, if you're if you're up to, you know, if you're like, that's about eight inches, I'd say. Uh, eight inches deep, seven inches deep, maybe six inches deep. Look, we got little sticks here. All this stuff will just slowly break down. Every time it rains, the water will get through, but it will not evaporate when it's sunny again, right? So I don't have to water this. I'm not going to have to weed it. All those weed plants that were underneath this, they're just going to be smothered by it. Very few of them will find their way through. Maybe the odd one will, but I don't care about that. Very few of them are going to find their way through this. And right now, nothing is going to come through this as aggressively as the potatoes. So the potato plants are going to be the first things to shoot foliage up through these leaves. And they're going to make that leafy potato canopy and it's going to shade out everything else. So they're going to outcompete the other things that might be trying to grow here. So this is just all going to be potatoes in a, in a month or so, right? Uh, so that's the, that's the trick. You just got to make sure you got enough mulch on the whole thing. If you do it right and you get enough mulch on it the first time, you don't have to do anything with it the remainder of the season. That's all you need to do. Let's go to the other garden. So here I am on the other side uh, doing this one. I've already uh, scuffed up the soil and uh, laid out the potatoes, but just for the sake of being scientific, I thought I would use uh, a little bit of seaweed here on these ones. And I know I just did another video on planting potatoes and I planted them using a different approach. And I guess the takeaway from that is it really doesn't matter. The main thing is that you're planting potatoes. <laughs> you know, they are good for you. Uh, so. Uh, don't let the don't let the health gurus feel fool you. I mean, yeah, if you're deep frying them and all that sort of stuff, that's probably not the best way to go about it. But um, potatoes, in and of themselves, 
are healthy foods, as far as I know, as far as what I've read. I'm not a health expert, but from what I've read, they're good for you. Uh, so, anyway, uh, lots of people around here. I live in Nova Scotia, Canada, and plenty of people think that uh, seaweed helps potatoes. And uh, I have to say, when I plant potatoes with seaweed, uh, I tend to... I tend to like the results. Sorry if I'm a bit uh, swatting around a bit. The flies are quite bad this afternoon. Black flies, they're out in force. Uh, so yeah, people here believe in seaweed as a soil, a soil amendment in general, and especially when it comes to potatoes. So uh, I use it when I can get it, you know. But if you can't get it, don't bother. But uh, yeah, just for fun, We'll, uh, we'll compare this, guy, this side to the other side, mulched with seaweed. Now this is not nearly enough mulch for potatoes. That's just food. That's just potato food. Now we got the yard waste. Yeah. Now some of you are gonna say, how do the potatoes find their way through that? I don't know, but they do. That's the main thing. Uh, the bigger leaves, you might be, have some consternation, consternation that they can't find their way through it, but they can. You got big flat leaves like these. I guess these are, uh, looks like oak leaves. Uh, don't put it on as thick, but they will find their way through it. I guarantee. I like this sort of grassy stuff, generally speaking, grass with a little bit of moss. A lot of people's lawns here have moss. I love that as a mulch. And uh, got a couple neighbors that are nice enough to uh, do the hard work of raking it all up. I never rake my lawn, I hate it. All right, that garden's ready. Now, some of you are gonna be asking, but hey, it's windy where I live. That's gonna blow away, believe me. It's windy where I live. We get hurricanes here. Right up until I put a middle roof on my house, the roof used to blow off my house every year. Pieces of uh, shingle would blow off every year, just to give you an indication. And it's a brand new house. It was built in 2011. Had shingles blowing off every single year. It's, uh, we get tropical storm force winds, and once in a while we get hurricane force winds. And any good, good storm we get here can have gusts that'll blow down big trees and cause all kinds of damage. Um, so, if you're worried about your leaves blown away, just get some branches off some trees. I like these evergreen boughs because I can get them easily where I live. Um, but you use what you can use what you can get your hands on easily. Some of you are gonna say, don't those evergreen, uh, don't those needles uh, acidify the soil? And the short answer is no, they don't. <laughs> Not in any appreciable way. And by the way, these needles aren't even in contact with the soil, right? I'm just, it's almost like I'm, think of this thing like a hand. And it's just holding the leaves down, right? That's all I'm doing. I'm just adding something on here to hold it all down and keep it from blowing away. I've got a couple more here. Yeah, a couple one there, one there. I just took a couple off the trees around here. The trees are fine, because I just took a couple branches, actually just pieces of branches, really. Almost like I was pruning the tree. So, the tree's gonna be fine. The potatoes will have no trouble getting through this. None at all. <laughs> they'll grow through it, eventually they'll die. I'll pull this all off. A lot of this uh, mulch will be broken down and just gone. Uh, another advantage to planting potatoes this way is that potatoes like cool soil. I mean, they need a certain temperature to grow, but generally speaking, they like cool soil. By keeping a mulch like this, it stays cool. Believe it or not, by keeping a mulch like this, it stays just the right kind of cool and just the right kind of wet for potatoes to grow. And you don't have to do anything. You see how easy that was, <laughs> right? I'm gonna have, uh, you know, probably, uh, I don't know, how many potatoes this is gonna give me. A good amount of potatoes is gonna come out of this bed um, in August, maybe September, uh, maybe July, I don't really know. <laughs> it all depends on how things go this season. Uh, 
And what's gonna be left after I harvest these potatoes? All of that weed soil is just gonna be dark, beautiful, rich garden soil for next year. Uh, the location in the garden that I haven't planted a garden in, I'll show you that. This spot here had potatoes growing on it last year. And now that the weed soil was just completely sort of broken down uh, in, uh, I don't know, April, some point in April, I just put some old cardboard here just to keep anything from growing here. I'm gonna plant pumpkins here, maybe in three or four weeks, something like that, maybe two or three weeks, I guess. Uh, I try to plant them towards the end of May. Even then we have a risk of frost, so you have to cover them with something like plastic or something like that, right? But uh, I'm just keeping it covered so that no weeds grow here. And uh, when it's time to plant, I'll literally just take a knife, cut a hole through the cardboard, <laughs> reveal the, you know, like a circle of soil or a square of soil, maybe 12 by 12 inches, right? Plant in that. I'll leave the cardboard on the rest because <laughs> it'll just rot away eventually, right? The worms will eat that. It'll go in one end of the worm and come out the other end of the worm, awesome soil. So why would I, why would I mess with that? You know, I'll, I'll cut a hole out of this. I'll put about three pumpkin seeds there. Once they start growing, I'll, you know, keep the nicest one and I'll mulch the rest of this with more mulch. Right, the remaining, I got a, two bags of uh, leaves left here that I haven't used. I'll just leave them here for now. But once the pumpkins are a decent size, I'll mulch the rest of this. And I won't water this or deal with it at all. <laughs> right <laughs> once the pumpkins are sort of established and hopefully I'll have some decent pumpkins here we'll see how it goes I mean this garden has only been something other than weeds for one year last year was its first year so I don't know how good the soil is here we'll see but I'm really not planning to amend it in any meaningful way uh, so we'll just uh, see how it goes anyway that's uh, building a garden not a lot of work not hard you know if you don't care about it being beautiful uh, it's pretty easy. And to put it another way, if all you care about is having good soil and happy plants, uh, if that's what beautiful is to you, then it gets really, really simple. Uh, if you're hung up on everything being, you know, magazine perfect, then, uh, you're, you know, you're going to do a lot more work. But if you're just thinking like a plant, what does the plant need? Well, then, then you can really make it simple and low cost, and you can just use rotten logs, old cardboard boxes, yard waste, and have a great garden. Both these gardens here that were potato gardens, next year will be gardens I can plant whatever I want in them, although I am limited in what I can plant because this is where the deer and the rabbits and the porcupines and the raccoons and everything is. So I can only plant things that are sort of deer-proof, right? Onions, garlic, potatoes, uh, for the most part, pumpkins I find. So I'm lucky. The deer here don't seem to bother my pumpkins. I know they bother other people's pumpkins. Um, anyway, there's a handful of things I can plant out here that are sort of deer proof. That's what I'll do out here. But anyway, I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.